Hey y'all, today we're going to talk to you guys about boondocking. So we, for those of you that follow us on a regular, know that we do multiple campouts throughout the year. One of which, one of our favorites, is at a Harvest Host. It's a Clydesdale Farm in Maryland. And it is boondocking only. And first, before we go deep into boondocking, there's some people who don't understand what boondocking is. <laughs> but I'm going to put a disclaimer up first before we start this video. We are not professionals Definitely by not. One, no means. So what we're getting ready to tell you guys and explain to you guys, and the reason we're getting in this video is because somebody called us just the other day and asked us some questions. So that prompted this video. So remember... I'm going to say it again. We are not professionals. This is just what we've learned over the years. So, and it's what we do that works for us. It may not work for you. So boondocking in our terms is camping somewhere with no power, no hookups, no, hookups, no power, no water, no sewer, no anything. So basically what you're doing is you're taking your RV or tent or whatever you want to call it, but we're going to go with the RV side of this. Mm -hmm. You're going to take your RV and you're going to park somewhere in a parking lot, in a harvest host, at a field, or even somewhere. even at a campground. Like there are <clears> campgrounds <throat> that are also referred to as dry camping, right? So there are some campgrounds that don't have hookups. Some state parks don't have hookups, which means no power, no water, no sewer, no nothing. That's just, our definition of boondocking. Yeah, it's just you and your camper. So it's what can you do, pretty much self-contained, right? Um, now remember as she calls, I'm a princess. So I'm gonna have to have water and I'm gonna have to have power. So that changes a lot of different people's ways. So I'll, I'll say most, cause I wanna say all, but I don't know that to be a fact. Most RVs have holding tanks. Um, what, which now, I our, guess, I guess our, we had one that did, first, so one I should know that. Big travel trailer was a, a FEMA trailer that they did didn't, not they, have they didn't, yeah, they didn't take it down to Louisiana at that time, and it had no tank. So everything went straight out. So most newer campers now have that. So I, I'm not going to get into, if you don't have any tanks, how to do your water, because I'm not familiar with that, and I don't even want to try to tell you the wrong thing. But what I will tell you is we have holding tanks. For those of you that also have holding tanks, which I do think is a vast majority of RVs nowadays, typically you have a freshwater tank, a gray tank, a black tank. Now you could have multiple gray tanks. You could have multiple black tanks, but we have one. I think we, it's safe to say everybody has at least one fresh, one gray, so one in, black. In our fusion, we have a 96 gallon fresh. We have a 44, two 44 grays and two 44 blacks. So you could have any combination, but general rule is before you go somewhere that you're going to boondock, you're going to fill or partially fill based on the amount of water you think you're going to need your fresh water tank to take it with you because you cannot hook up to a water spigot where you're going. You're not going to have any water other than what you take with you. So how do I know if I can boondock? Well, you we're going to get to that in a minute because I want to go over some of the basics first and then we're going to tell you how to test out everything you've come up with to see if you really are ready. So you're going to show me how to test how to boondock? I am. Okay. You know, but I'm going to show you how to test it. And again, not foolproof, but it worked for us and it's kind of our, our, our go-to when people say, well, I can't come to your event yeah. because I just can't boondock. I, I don't think I'll have enough water. Um, maybe you will, maybe you won't. And again, we'll tell you how to do that. Um, but so... And, 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 and through that testing process, you're going to find out, you know, you could find out how much water you're going to need and electricity is the same way. So if you have solar, if you don't, if you have batteries, a generator, lithium, all the things, right? So everybody could have a, a different scenario. When we started, uh, we had no solar, but we had a generator. So what that means is as long as generators were allowed, we could park somewhere without power. We could run our generator. It would power part of our rig the way it was the way it was configured from the factory. It controlled seven receptacles, and no, our generator our generator ran everything. It was okay. I'm I'm confusing the two. So we've had so many RVs over the last couple of years. Well, no, through. but our yeah. very first <laughs> RV where okay. she's going to our very first Fusion, it had a generator, no, no solar, solar prep at all. Everything in the RV worked through the through the generator. It was a 5,500 watt Onan 
everything worked just like it would be if you're running off of shore power. Everything <clears throat> being, well, but back up, because everything does not mean you can run all three ACs and the convection oven and your Keurig coffee pot and a hair dryer. Like, you cannot do that. It, it, it There's just not enough power even with the generator to do that. That's right. So with limitations, you, and if you have a generator, I'm sure you know what you can and can't do without the generator, um, as far as power goes, because that's a learning lesson. Then the next fusion we had, we got it with 600, 600 watts of solar watts. and we had 300 amp hours of batteries. So we went out and thought, hot dog, we have solar and we have batteries. I don't, but, need, I don't ever need to come back home now. But before we went out and before we actually got the solar was when Keystone was pushing solar and they all came with a certain amount of solar. And we got really frustrated because we kept asking the question, so how much solar do we need? How many how many times have you guys asked that question? What do I need to go do what I want to do out there? And the answer was, they don't yeah, really well, know. They, they, but nobody would say, I don't know. They kind of skirted around the answer. And, you know, it was like, well, is this enough for us to boondock? Well, you know, there was never a definite. And we left, like we left one of the RV shows, like frustrated, frustrated. and upset that nobody would answer our question. And so when we got our new fusion, we got 600 watts of solar. Um, it it came that way. And still we were kind of frustrated not having a definite answer as to what it would do. And then we worked with our friends over at Future Solutions to upgrade from 600 to 1200. And we brought to them the... <laughs> the question again. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> what can we do with this? What will it do? What do we need? And they helped clarify and explain why nobody had given us an answer. The answer is because there is no answer. There is no black and white answer as to how much solar I need, you need, your neighbor needs, because it depends on how you live. And that sounds simple enough. Um, and it is if you think about it really. So are you like, we have friends that boondock all the time. They use a fan, you know, for cooling and that's enough for them. This guy needs to run his AC. So so he, we wake up in the morning and I ask Dave, I said, Dave, because we have about the same water, same amperage. And I say, how much power did you use last <laughs> night? First of all, it's not how much solar did you use. It's how much power, power did you use. How much, how much what did you deplete out of your batteries yeah, how much overnight? Did you, how much did you use? And he says, well, I'm, I'm down to 94%. And I went, huh, I'm down to 85 And we kind of like talk back and forth and we figured out that I have my AC running. I got and he running just had it, a fan. Yeah, I have it running at 56 to keep me really, really cold with my fan running at all time. And he just has one fan running. So it all depends on how you live. I mean, and that's a perfect example. Need. So if they, if somebody gave us an answer of you need this much solar, you need this much battery to live off of, that's a different number than what Dave needs because he's not an energy hog. If you're someone that needs to run your Keurig or your hair dryer or a flat iron, those things burn massive amounts for short periods of time, right? Only when you're using it. So like you can watch the spike. If we turn the coffee pot on during that part where it's really getting hot to heat that water, it is burning up the energy. Once it's done, it goes back to, you know, what it was before. But again, depends on how you live as to what you're going to need to, you know, to get by. And, don't, and everybody can conserve, right? If we're, if we're boondocking somewhere, we conserve water more than we would if we're in an RV park. If we're boondocking, we conserve energy. And if, you know, our batteries are running low and it's going to rain and we need to, you know, build up some more energy, we can run our generator to feed our batteries. You may not have that option if you don't have a generator. So I hope that explains kind of, that <laughs> was, kind of a, it was a little more buster. wordy than I wanted to be, you're but I still, hope that explains it depends on how you live as to what you need. You're still very confused right now. I know that. And that's how we were the whole time. And we're still to this day, we're still kind of confused. It's like, wow, what did we run last night that burned that much energy? And you, you don't think like the other night we had to put our tank heaters on. And I didn't realize that... You don't think about that. I didn't, burn I didn't turn them off. And they're burning as we're trying to charge. So the tank heater, since it's cold outside, is burning energy, burning energy. And you go, dang, gone. what did I use? I didn't have anything plugged in. You, that was running. Your refrigerator is running because we have a residential refrigerator. You know, our daughter at one time was in the back and she turned uh, turned our heater on back here. It's kind of like a space heater. Yeah. And she drained us completely. And I thought, what, what in, the, in world the world is going on? I get woke up in the middle of the night with a beeping sound that our battery's almost dead and I have nothing turned on, nothing plugged in. So you gotta, gotta really look and see everything that's plugged in because every little piece of stuff like our, 
our 12 volt TV, you know, our lights that the motion lights that go up, but those come on all the time. That stuff burns energy. Even just a little bit, but it's burning it. But I think I have two good analogies that might help. So think about it this way. How much gas do you need to make a trip somewhere? Okay, well, your fuel mileage is different if you're putting along town, stopping at every stoplight, if you're gunning it every time you take off versus if you're going to fill your tank, you're going to get on the interstate, and you're going to cruise at 55 miles per hour. Your, your fuel mileage is going to be different. So the amount of fuel you're going to need to get from one place to the other is going to change based on that. Or another way to think about it is your electric bill. Uh, for those of you that are in or have been in, which I think is probably going to be most of us, uh, a sticks and bricks at some point in time, and you had an electric bill. If you're running your AC 24-7 in the middle of the summer, your electric bill is going to be higher than on in that month, you know, that spring or fall month where maybe you need the, the heat for a couple of days or maybe you need the air for a couple of days. But the rest of the month, you're not really using power other than to, you know, cook and clean and that kind of thing. It's going to be a different usage. So how you live and how you plan to live while you're boondocking is going to dramatically affect the amount of energy you're going to need to sustain that trip. I think for me to boondock the way I want to boondock, I need a 54 foot trailer full of panels on top with no air conditioner so it can be fully paneled. I'm going to need a tractor mm -hmm. trailer to pull the front of the camper so I can have enough batteries in there. You're just and, going to need a boondocking spot that has a cord. And then I need to put another trailer behind our trailer full of water so I can have a princess shower. Take that three hour shower if I need that three hour shower. So, but that that's how it works. But we we have learned over the years how to conserve how when to we conserve, need to. Conserve. So we do get in and out of the showers a lot quicker. Unfortunately, while we're boondocking, you may come into our camper and you may see some dirty dishes because we want to be able to wash dishes all at one time. Instead, instead of wasting of a bunch of water for one cup. To try to get it warm we'll and try to get it all that kind of stuff. Get a few in so. there and we'll do them all at one time. Um, so those are just little things, right? Little ways you can you can conserve your water. Um, another thing, like a good example, is at our boondocking event that we have every fall, you arrive on Friday and you have to leave on Sunday. It's just the weekend. So if you're interested in that, as of this video right now, we have... I was going to say like three, three spots more left. spots and then we put a waiting list on there. So if you want to come out and practice boondock and learn how to boondock, this is the perfect time to go. We have three spots left. Right. So, so email us now if you want to go. An easy way to get around what if, what if we don't have enough water on that weekend is Friday before you leave to come to the event. Go ahead and grab a shower a while, you, while shower. you're at the campground or at your house or wherever. Um, take a nice, long, hot shower and get enjoy. get a bubble bath next time. That would be Friday. That got her quiet for a minute. Saturday, skip the shower. Ew. Sunday morning, you're going to get up, eat breakfast, and leave. And when you get home Sunday, grab that nice long hot shower again. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. From you Friday to Sunday, you're going to make it without a shower. So if, if you're really concerned about having enough water, that's a great event to just see, hey, can we just make it for the weekend? Because you don't really need to shower. Like let, You can just skip a day. And you shouldn't have that many dishes to wash over the weekend. We're talking Friday night. Three meals Saturday and Sunday morning. And a lot of that is like potlucks and stuff where you're not even going to dirty up all the dishes in your camper to eat. So. so now I'm wondering how in the world can I figure this out before I go to a camp out or figure this out before I try to go to a harvest host or figure this out. Because there's nothing worse than getting to a boondocking location and running out of water because I decided I was going to go two or three or four days. And it's like, uh-oh. I didn't realize that when I'm washing me, when I'm washing the dishes, I don't turn the water off. So I just run the water, run the water, run the water. He looks like he took a shower when he's done. Hey, first of all, we know I saw something on Facebook the other day. That's what it looks like when you when you get done what, washing. When your whole shirt's yeah, so wet. When you get done washing dishes in an RV, everything's wet because yeah, the well, way your it just shirt's splats, wet, so. the counter's wet. There's water everywhere. So anyway, I'm not listening to her. But go back to the thing. I take my 10, 15, 20 minute shower, and then all of a sudden, the first day, I'm out of water. Um, same thing with electricity, you know, I'm out there boondocking with my solar, my batteries, and I don't think anything about it. And I run all three ACs and it's cloudy outside and all of a sudden. And now it's boon. Now I'm it's, out. now it's nighttime and he's got to sleep without his AC. Mm. So what is so, the easiest way to I do have a, I out? have a perfect dry run solution. Um, but before we do that, I do want to interrupt and say thank you for being here. If you're new here, we're glad you stopped by. 
Absolutely. you've been here before, we're glad you're back. Um, while you're here, if you will, go ahead and mash that thumbs up. Give us a like. Subscribe. Ring and the bell. Ring the bell. Please ring the bell because the videos are starting to start coming and our camp out is heading soon. So we're getting ready to do our caravan across the country. You're yes. not going to want to miss those because we are going to create we're going to do some short videos FOMO for we're you gonna, guys. You're yes. going to want to go. You're going to want to watch about this. So. Um, it's going to be, if nothing else, it's going to be an adventure, but we're all looking forward to it. So just a, a shameless plug. We'll throw that in there. And then let me tell you my solution for how to see if you are ready now, to boondog. This is our disclaimer. Not a professional. However, this is what we did and it worked. And so this is what I have told friends to do and it has worked for them. So for what it's worth, here's my two cents worth. Next time you go to a campground, even if it's just for the weekend, um, when you get to the campground, and I'm talking a campground with a full hookup. So when you get to the campground, let's say you're looking at wanting to boondock for three days and you're going to be at the campground for three days. When you get there, get all situated and parked into your site. Uh, if your batteries are fully charged, then just don't bother plugging in. If they're not, plug in to get them full. So because that's make sure that's you're the at way 100%. you would right, and that's the way you would be leaving on a boondocking event. I would like to think is that you would be sure everything was at 100%. Go ahead and hook your water up at the campground and fill your fresh water tank. I don't mean hook it up like you normally would. There's probably a little lever or a different place to plug it in um, and fill your tank. Now most campers have an overflow, so you fill your tank up until it overflows. When it overflows, you know you have enough water. But there. wait, not just. There's more. When it starts to overflow, you need to give it a minute because it'll burp, right? Because that tank has a little air in the top, so. It'll burp, it'll, it'll come up, it overflows, it stops, and it goes, it fills up some more, and then it burps again. Now that's on ours. Everyone's a little bit different, but that's what I've seen on most of the RVs. Okay. So and now so we're full of water, full of water, full of, battery. full of power. And you can either unplug your hose or disconnect your hose if you want, or leave it hooked up, just turn the water off. And then you're gonna, whatever appropriate switches you need to do so that your camper then knows that you're running from your freshwater tank. And those are gonna be different on all of them, but I'm sure if you look in your water bay, it'll show you how to switch it so that it's pulling from your fresh tank. And then just go like you're you're there for the weekend you can either just for fun go ahead and run like you normally would and see how many <laughs> hours <laughs> how many hours or days it takes you to run out of water and juice you're gonna find um, out by four hours we're out of water so like if you were going for a week that would be a fun test right just roll a couple days just like you normally do and see how how quickly you run out of um all the goods or if you're just there for a weekend and you're just trying to make sure that you have enough to boondog for the weekend Go ahead and conserve. Try to be conservative in your water usage. Try to be conservative in your power usage. Um, and if you make it all weekend without having to add more water or plug in, guess what? You made it. You're ready. You're ready to go for a weekend. Now, that doesn't throw in the fact that maybe the weekend you go, it pours down rain, it's cloudy all weekend, and you can't, you know, if you have solar, you don't have any way to refill your batteries because they're not going to charge up in the rain like they would in the sun. And most campgrounds probably are not gonna appreciate you if you only have a generator and you run that generator. Yeah, the, the campgrounds to do aren't that. gonna so like you, that. So you may wanna try this if you have sticks and bricks too. Another good spot to do that would be in your driveway. Right, um, if that you way, if you wanna run, to yeah, If you that. wanna run your generator, run your generator. And the other thing is, we didn't think about this, is our generator, especially when it's running pretty hard, burns one gallon an hour. Um, so I know if I have, ours holds two 30 gallon tanks, uh, so I have 60, 60 gallons of fuel, which I can burn 60 hours out right. in the wild. If you have one of those smaller portable generators, they may only hold three or four or five gallons. You need to find out how many hours it runs because there's nothing worse than going out there and filling it up. And that five gallon generator is only going to give you an hour, hour and a half. Right. So every generator is different. Everything is different. If you want to try the generator side of it, I wouldn't recommend, like I said, doing it in the, in the campground. campground. You could do that in your driveway. Or even if you're um, a Harvest Host member, a lot of the Harvest Hosts allow generators. But especially for water, like give that a run while you're in a campground where you can add more water if you need to, you can dump your tanks if you need to, and just see how good you are at conserving your water. Um, and, and for a weekend. So like if you have a generator and you're not worried about the power, just 
go ahead and just test the water. That the water test seems the to water. be. Yeah, was kind of test yeah, the water. I didn't mean it like that, but <laughs> that is the biggest thing people say. Well, I, I just don't know if we have enough. I don't know if my fresh water tank holds enough water for me to make it the weekend. Um, most enough. people have either an onboard generator or they have one they take with them, so they're not so concerned about power. Water seems to be the big thing. I'm just telling you, if you work really hard at conserving, you know, use that little button on the faucet in the shower. If you're going to take a shower, go ahead and hop in. Get wet and then push the button so that the water stops. Lather up, turn the water back on, oh, rinse off. You can take, they call it, I think they call it a Navy shower, so you, you can do that. Or don't, you know, like work for the weekend with the water you've got, see how it works, see what it'll do for you. And then if you're wanting to go more days than that, test it out next time you're in a campground for more time than that and give it a whirl or even at your drive, in your house, you know, most, I shouldn't say most, some people have the ability to park their camper in their driveway. Give it a whirl there, you know, fill your water tank up, see how many showers you can take before you run out of water, see how many, you know, how many dishes you can wash before you run out of water. And like we keep water on board for drinking water. We don't typically drink out of what comes out of the, the out of our awesome. tanks. So we <clears throat> literally only use the water that we have on board for dishes, cleaning, and, showers. And, and showering. Now so. there is a lot of other ways you can do it. We're not going to get into this video, but you can carry the, the blue boy or the blue tote, whatever it is. If you need to dump your tanks, if you're somewhere, you can fill those up, take them to a, take them to a dump station. You can also carry a bladder tank inside right. of your truck. So, fill that bladder tank yeah. up with another 50, hundred gallons. And put we've it in never there, done so that, so right? So we've never done that. So I'm not saying you can't do that. You absolutely can't. I just don't know anything about it. So I, not that I'm an expert, period, but I can only tell you based on our experience what we have done. And we've and done a lot of boondocking. Over so there. that that is how we figured it out. The first time we were really nervous about about boondocking. We had a trip planned. We had our Harvest Host membership. And I don't remember how many days it was the first time that we were going to do it. And I was a nervous wreck. I'm like, what if we run out of water? What are we going to do? And then all of a sudden it was like, well, duh, we can test this in a campground where we have water. Fill the tank up, turn the water off, and see how many days we can go without refilling. And turns out we did just fine and then we took our our maiden journey and we made it just fine and we've learned to be conservative so we're curious first of all have you boondocked and let us know are you afraid to boondock if are you afraid, wanting to really do this but you're really afraid to try it here's the thing here's the way to do it here's the way to do it and then here's another shameless plug like he said we have three spots left at our boon at our boondocking event in october um you can check that out on our website or on our facebook page um, that's a perfect place if you're a little nervous about doing it and being on your own because there will be at least, I am thinking it's going to be 70 RVs. There'll be 70 RVs. Uh, there. There's going to be plenty of people there that if you need help or you have a question, you're not sure what you're doing, you're not sure how to do it, there's going to be plenty of people there to help you. So like if you're looking for a chance to test it without being like out in the field somewhere where you don't know what to do if something goes wrong, I think that's going to so be a good So what place. we would love for is everybody that watches this video to at least let us comment below. Have you boondocked or have you not? That's what we want to know. And we if you haven't, know. why have you not? Is it just because you're not interested or is it because you're nervous? Because I'm going to tell you one thing. And did, and did this video help you help make you a little less nervous? Yeah. And before we go, you just got to understand the, the boondocking places that we go to, you can't see that. You can't see that in a campground. So that's why we're trying to get everybody to learn to boondock. Whether or not it's Harvest Host, whether or not it's Boondockers Welcome, whether or not it's BLM Land, whether or not it's just your, your boyfriend, girlfriend's husband's mother, sister's land, whatever it is, you don't get those views in a campground. You just, I mean, yeah, yes, when you're at the Florida Keys and you have that water back there. Well, yeah, there, but it's yes, still not is. the same as being out in the, in the wild. So... I, I, I'm going to drop one more shameless plug and then we'll let y'all go. That's but, a lot of plugs. Yeah. We're speaking so, plugs and boondocking. Well, no, but I want to say this. Um, our crawl, the entirety of the trip, the journey is full. We do still have openings at the camp out. So one will be in Yellowstone. One will be in the Black Hills, South Dakota. One will be in Pigeon Forge. But if you're curious about the whole boondocking thing, all of these things will be happening before our boondocking event in October. We are stopping, I think it's at 16 of our stops in this 6,800 mile trip, our harvest host, which is going to be boondocking. Uh, we are also going to do some boondocking out west that's not even at a harvest host. We will be posting all along the way. This trip's going to take place June 1st through June 29th. So follow us on Instagram, Facebook. Not Check June out the. June 1st through June 29th. June 1st through July 29th. That's uh -huh. a long trip to go in a follow month. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. We'll be posting different things throughout the trip. 
Um, and a lot of them are going to be some of those places that you just don't see unless you're boondocking. So. Absolutely. So that's a good way to check out what we're talking about and, and fully understand it. So we're hoping this video helped you guys. That's what this is all about. Um, we're trying to get people out, out in the real world and trying to really see what we get to see out there. So if these are helping, make sure you give us those thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell. And until you guys find us boo-docking somewhere out there. <laughs> Safe travels, y'all.